2022 starts with five key assembly elections Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Punjab, Goa and Manipur. The campaign has begun in all states and yet this time around there is some queasiness evident in the oft heard question will the elections be held as per schedule. Jan 15th is the outside limit for the election commission to announce the polls. The political leaders are out in the field as is the prime minister of India. Win or lose, the wheels of democracy cannot be halted except in clearly defined emergency situations laid out in the Constitution. And as history has shown, people do not take kindly to those interfering with the one day where every voter, regardless of caste or community or class, feels he or she has a say in government and can, with that vote, determine who will be in power or, for that matter, out of power. Welcome everyone to another edition of Off Limits. Our guest this week is a well-known Dr. S.Y. Qureshi, 17th Chief Election Commissioner of India, who's well-respected, well-regarded, and like many bureaucrats, or unlike many bureaucrats, is very, very active. We hear from him, we read him, and he, being so respected, has a lot to contribute in the election keeping uh, business of India in particularly now with the elections coming on. He is the Chancellor of IILM University and a distinguished fellow in Ashoka University. So welcome, uh, Qureshi Saab. It's really nice to have you with us this time. Thank you, Zuma. So I'm going to begin with the one question everybody seems to be asking, though actually one shouldn't be asking this question. Do you think that the elections are going to be held on time? Or well, they're going to be held on? Well, it's a, a very, very disturbing question, in fact. Uh, elections have, in 70-year-old history have never been postponed, even by a day, except in emergency situations and three emergencies. Uh, first in Assam, second in Punjab, and third in uh, JNK, when we had insurgency-like situation. Because the uh, Constitution of India prescribes uh, postponement of election only on uh, grounds of emergency, for which uh, the conditions have been very clearly spelled that it has to be war, external uh, invasion, or internal uh, rebellion, or in insurgency. So but except for that, there is no provision for postponement of election. And, and But for these three states which I mentioned, there has been no postponement even by a day. Because constitution says that the, uh, it lays down the term of uh, Evitan Sabha, or parliament for that matter, and on the conclusion of that day, five years, automatically the house is stand dissolved. There is no question of it, uh, extension. Um, now, if emergency was to be imposed, uh, number one, it requires a, a, a presidential proclamation uh, endorsed by parliament. Um, but then it has to fulfill the, those three conditions unless they amend the constitution to include pandemic. But yes, but that is, oh, they'll have to amend the constitution to use the word man pandemic. Is it? Because yes. the one argument that you hear is that obviously when the constitution was made, people did not foresee this kind of a health emergency. Uh, yes. And that would get then justified. So what do you yeah. think? Yeah, correct. You know, that, yeah, that is the argument we are hearing, but it's uh, strange. You know, there are two alternatives which are, which are being mentioned in the same breath. One, uh, ban the rallies or postpone the election. There, there is a world of difference between the two. Banning the rallies is an executive order either of the government or of the election commission which can be taken in five minutes. No problem at all. So instead of focusing on that, they're talking of uh, postponing election. Now, constitutional provision apart, uh, Sima, uh, for the law, 2020, there were 100 countries where elections were due and in uh, almost 80 to 90 countries, the elections were held in time with due precautions, COVID precautions. And why talk of other countries? In, in India itself, in Bihar, before Bihar election, election commission issued uh, detailed guidelines based on the global experience. And they're excellent guidelines uh, because, you know, all the social distancing after, after all, except for the lockdown, the uh, 
life uh, goes on, the, the things keep happening, people go out, do their business, everything, so long as you maintain social distancing. So the, the guidelines for uh, polling were very logical and simple. First, uh, the uh, size of the uh, polling booth was reduced from 1,500 voters to 1,000 voters to lessen the crowding. Secondly, the five uh, feet uh, distance in the queue yeah. for every voter, that was the thing. The polling hours were extended by one hour so that the people have longer time, fewer people and in longer time to vote. So that was another thing. Then the uh, sanitization of the staff, of the booth, uh, of the voter, and even gloves were given to the voters because they were supposed to press a button on the EVM so physical contact was involved. So gloves were provided. All these are excellent guidelines. The culprit uh, in the whole thing is the rallies. The, now there are the hundred ways of campaigning and rallies is just one of them. It might be the most effective, but ban it. Yeah, and the rallies are going on currently. So there's no the, less up on that. Exactly. Now, uh, now currently they, you have raised another issue. Right now, election commission is over in the picture. There is no election currently. So who is the, allowing the rallies? And who is supposed to stop the rallies? The government of the day. The same government which issued imposed a lockdown and people uh, accepted it. All kinds of restrictions which are uh, placed from time to time, uh, day curfew, night curfew, the uh, weekend curfew and whatever. Now that uh, uh, these instructions are being issued by some authority, the same authority has the power to ban the rallies while they're not doing it. And I'm not talking of voluntarily the, foregoing the rallies as parties should have thought of doing. I'm happy that two parties yesterday decided to do so. So, but that should have been done earlier. Now, funny argument we hear even from the political party. They are the guys who are in power to impose the uh, ban on the rally. They say, let's see what election commission, when election commission tells us we will stop. No, election commission will tell you something in due course, but not now. Today, you are the people who have to decide why you're not. It's a very illogical thing. That's a very important point, you know, because people tend to forget that and they feel that the election commission should be giving the directives. Whereas actually it is the political parties and the government itself that should be uh, restricting it, right? Now, at the moment. Uh, at the moment. At the, at the yeah. moment. Until uh, elections are declared. Yes. So now the procedure is that if the government actually wants to uh, uh, postpone the elections, the procedure would be to take it and amend the uh, constitution and bring in the word pandemic as an emergency situation. They can't do yes. it without that. They, can't do it. they cannot do it without that. And uh, in any case, uh, I don't think there is ground for that because we ourselves, uh, Election Commission of India in our country, have conducted elections in Bihar when uh, we were uh, going through the second uh, wave and which was worse than what we have today in the sense that uh, at that time we did not know what COVID is and how to handle it. We were totally foxed. Today we are much wiser, smarter and it's only the a possibility that we are uh, uh, on that course. But at that time we were in the thick of uh, COVID and we conducted excellent elections. Um, he, uh, and later on in Bengal and Tamil Nadu and Kerala and others, there again the violation was only in the context of uh, the rallies. People, uh, government, election commission did not impose a ban on the rallies. The rallies continued. The leaders uh, continued to enjoy the crowds instead of feeling concerned that this is going to be a spreader. So that was a fatal mistake, uh, which we keep remembering even today. Now, this, uh, uh, the Uttar Pradesh election is technically before May. It should be completed before the process before May. And obviously, because it's supposed to be in six parts or eight parts, so we don't know that yet. Uh, because I was reading about this and that it's going to be in six parts, so they'll have to announce it along with the other elections, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So what would be the outside limit for the election commission to announce the elections in the five or six states that are going to polls? You know, the practice is that when the, any number of states, 4, 5, 7, 10, they are likely to go to the uh, poll uh, uh, within a span of a few months, within a span of normally six months, because the election commission has six months uh, um, uh, flexibility, six months to advance the election, not one day to delay. Uh, that is the difference we, we must understand. 
Now, uh, if elections are falling in various states within six months, they are clubbed. The logic is that the results uh, in one state will influence the voters' mind in the ele election, which is immediately following in some other states. So that is why they are clubbed. Now, here are uh, five states which are going to poll. Four of them in March, between 15th of March to 27th of March. And the uh, UP is by 14th of May, right, uh, two months later. And since the uh, UP elections are likely to be held, and as in the past, in several phases, so it goes on for a month and a half, which means it is immediately after Punjab. Now, when we club, what is the date? Now, do we club it with UP or we, do we club it with the earliest state, which is Goa, which is 15th of March? Since we cannot go, uh, delay Goa by a day or Uttarakhand or Punjab by a day, so the earliest date is the Goa, the 15th of March. And we keep normally four to five days of margin because there is a lot of paperwork. Even after the results are announced, you go home and file your story and then go home. But Election Commission is still has to have physically all the papers coming from all the states before they can present the result to the president. So three, four days of safety margin are required. So I, I would say 10th of March is the last day when all five elections should be completed. Right. Now, uh, uh, presuming that the UP will have uh, several phases that are spread over one, mo one month. So 26 days are compulsory in the law. You know, in how many days for nomination, rejection, and so on. So if 10th of May is the D-Day, assume D-Day, so uh, come backward by the 26 days or one month, that brings you to 26th of January, All right? So, um, uh, and uh, uh, you have to issue the, the notification, uh, which uh, I had calculated should have been, should be issued by 15th of January. Now, 15th of January means immediately the, uh, the 26 days uh, limit of the play down by law begins. But actually before the first notification, Election Commission has the flexibility of 21 days allowed by the Supreme Court. And in fact, with the restriction that you cannot do it more than 21 days. So, so if you know, after all, you, you there is a political activity required. After notification, immediately the nomination filing starts. So where is the time for political activity? Now, we have already cut into those 21 days. Those 21 days should have begun by 25th of December. We have lost 10 days. Now we have lost 15 days. Okay, okay. Uh, cut into it further another four or five days. But beyond three, four days, five days, it should not be delayed because then uh, you have a serious constitutional crisis. You're really cutting into the, into the time limit, uh, which is available for a good, healthy election. Now, would you have been concerned? Would you then think this delay could be because of my first question? Does that bring it back that there might be some move to delay the election? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't see the, too much indication uh, of uh, uh, intention or uh, atmosphere being created for delay, delaying election, postponing election. It is more to accommodate the rallies. Right. The last minute rallies, because uh, in those last minute rallies, the government uh, makes a huge announcement of thousands and thousands of crores. So this is because that is what we saw in Bengal and everywhere. So obviously, uh, some big announcements for UP are still uh, to be seen. So they're waiting for the rallies to finish. Okay. And, uh, that makes a lot yeah. of sense. I want to go a little bit back into the independence of the Election Commission. You know, often we've seen as people, as journalists who have covered elections over the years, that the independence of the Election Commission often has to do with the independence and the vision and the understanding brought to it by the chief election commissioner. I don't know how, but you know, the, your whole personality gets reflected and then it also gets reflected in how the, uh, the election commission uh, basically responds to issues. You know that. But before I come to obvious, the obvious question I want to ask you that when you were the chief election commissioner, did you feel pressure at times and did you have to resist certain political directives which you felt were not good for democracy? Well, yeah, sure. Uh, um, we did not feel the kind of pressure that uh, we talked about today. 
uh, of, of course, the, every political party has this concern. Now, one is uh, putting a pressure, with, uh, particularly by the ruling party. The other is they, they come and make their uh, representation. All parties come to the election commission all the time with their uh, petition and uh, suggestion. It is up to, uh, we take it as a pressure or we take it as a, as a uh, good uh, request. So we, we deal with this. But um, well, there were one or two uh, things when, you know, uh, too many delegations were coming for the same things, the postponement of an election somewhere and all exactly on the same ground. Um, uh, we refused. We said no, there's nothing doing. We cannot delay election even by a day. I see. So, uh, uh, do you did you ever feel that a particular government had appointed you, and because of that, you had to be a little bit more partial towards that political party, or were you? Yes. Able, yeah. Yeah, actually, that is a, the the defect in India's election system. As I have said many times, that the most powerful election commission of the world, which is India, has the most defective system of appointment. We are just appointed directly by the government of the day. I also came from the same uh, procedure and I always felt, uh, I, I would have felt stronger if the leader of opposition had also signed my appointment letter. Uh, and I said it uh, the first time in Karan Thapar show and he repeat, made me repeat it to, for clarity. I said, of course, I would have felt stronger if a leader of opposition at that time, it was Sikma Saraj, if he had also signed because that becomes a guarantee that all political parties have equal trust in you. It's, uh, I'm, I was lucky that uh, even the BJP had full trust in me. I asked Mr. Uh, Mr. Jetley was here, if you ask me, the, he used to uh, comment on it. In fact, perhaps we were um, uh, accommodating BJP more because um, we used to feel that accommodating the opposition is more important than accommodating, uh, accommodating the government. Because opposition is the underdog, and the underdog should always be uh, be supported. And uh, there were uh, occasions when ruling party felt annoyed uh, with me or with uh, any other colleague, uh, thinking. But they, these were small minds, not the top brass. The smaller mind. Hey, look, we appointed you, and you are. This is how you are behaving. He says you appointed us, uh, and after that, the constitution takes over. Then we are independent. You cannot look at us. You cannot uh, not to speak of giving us any direction. So, and it was all in the public knowledge. Every other day, there was a spat, uh, for instance, between me and the law minister, um, who was uh, the who issued the uh, my own appointment letter. So, but the appointment letter issue is one thing. After that, uh, the constitution takes takes over. Right. So, you know, over the years, and particularly in recent years, where the tendency of the USP of the government is to have faceless ministers uh, against some of the powerful minister and the prime minister. So the election commission also seems to have a fairly faceless chief election commissioner. So, uh, I mean, I'm not trying to say that it is not doing or working as it should, etc. But uh, the point is that we do not see the chief election commissioner going and you know, uh, striking a note every now and again when the country expects them to, to take positions, to speak out, to, to be able to give an impression that yes, he is actually steering the democratic process of elections and is very much on the job. Now, do you think that's a good thing or is that a bad thing for- Seema, you have asked a very unusual and a very interesting question. And um, uh, I also uh, once faced this situation. I was also, uh, I was not media shy as such, but at the same time, I uh, kept the distance uh, to the maximum and only when required on need base basis, I used to uh, give an interview, for instance. And suppose that I give one major interview for 10 days, I used to do what I call my, a monrat. I will not talk to anybody. Every uh, top journalist uh, who wanted to interview me knew that. Uh, otherwise, you know, they uh, jumping on every channel every day uh, yeah. it, it looks very, very cheap. And obviously, one, uh, what happens is that uh, if they see this interview, uh, other channel, uh, within half an hour, I'll start getting called. Oh, you gave interview to Seema. Uh, why not five minutes to us, ten minutes to us? 
then every channel you are visible that very silly so i was against it in a very good friend of mine once advised me ye qureshi coming on the media is uh, not your privilege it is your duty because you have to be visible nation wants to hear you they will get confidence when you say things uh, you know and assuring them of free and fair election and uh, i thank keep thanking my friend uh, every time i meet him because that was a very wise advice you know uh, uh, to the extent i was camera shy uh, media shy uh, as i said i although i'm not so to the extent i was avoiding them then i lessened it uh, and i started coming out more often because uh, the the your question about the present uh, you know every uh, individual has his own uh, working style it management management style some uh, um, are uh, happy to come on the camera some want to avoid it altogether so we have to uh, strike a balance uh, because uh, as i said uh, uh, coming on the media is your national duty to uh, uh, give confidence to the people that there is a vibrant uh, institution and there is a cec who is watching our interest and who will not allow anything uh, uh, to go astray so to that extent uh, visibility is a b- better idea and you felt better you felt that the reaction was far better when you started coming a little bit more on television yes yes uh, yeah. surely in, indeed indeed at the same time although i have still not given up my approach of uh, avoiding too many channels you know if you talk to one or two that is good enough your uh, message carries uh, uh, for the record uh, everybody knows but then to to say it on every channel every possible there are 1000 where how many can, can you cater to uh, i'm going to ask you a last question which i know when you were the cc we used to be hustling you we would be you know reporters were all the time in the election commission office they were seeking out the chief election commissioner like you also said and being and pushing you guys and being there all the time and asking for everything even if it was a state election and now you know gradually because government has closed many of its doors and you find that the media itself is now more interested in handouts rather than finding out the truth as it were going inside so i'm sure much of that pressure is off um, the cc or the also the election commission other officials do you think that is a good thing or would you rather have us knocking on the door all the time no i personally have nothing against the media knocking on the door all the time because that is your job in fact uh, although it may sound like a contradiction um, when i became the election commissioner uh, tribune wrote uh, a kind of a bio of me um, by a journalist who had known me for 20 30 years in haryana and one line there was one line paragraph qureshi is media person's darling now picking up uh, picking this line up uh, one very top uh, bbc is in uh, anchor uh, owen bennett jones he once interviewed me a freelancing full length interview and then he asked me said sentence i have read that what does it mean i said it's very simple the media like me because i was accessible to them and this is the advice i give to my juniors also that they look if uh, you have a story in your mind about me you will do it with me or without me if i talk to you i am doing myself a favor that my version will also be carried otherwise if you, if you i refuse to talk to you uh, not open the door you will still publish your story why without me which will be hostile to me and then i'll complain and uh, cry so therefore it makes it is common sense that uh, top people should be accessible to the media even the junior most because the junior most also writes his stories and they are also carried therefore uh, avoiding media is a bad policy that's that comes from a person who's confident in himself because most people even 20 years ago 15 years ago or 10 years ago would not really look at the media as something uh, they want to face so yes, that's also, also also let me tell you okay it might of course come from confidence you know the being accessible to you is one thing but what i tell you is in my hands i should tell you only what i i want to tell you and what i don't want to tell you you cannot extract out of me but that is a skill which i have to acquire that is a capability which i must have should tell you only what i what you need to know uh, 
um, you can't extract information from me. Uh, that, that it will be. I, I'll be very silly if somebody can extract information uh, involuntarily out of me. And people who are chief election commissioners are usually senior persons who've had a whole career behind them. Well. Exactly, exactly. The very senior people and very wise people. Yes. yes. And the people who are surrounding you with the journalists are relatively younger, you know. So, it, I mean, it's a fair equation, uh, not a fair equation in that sense. I wanted to uh, uh, complete this actually now while you were talking, I was just thinking about it. That do you think that, you know, considering the fact that there is so much of deep polarization today, there is so much of la a lack of transparency. I mean, we've always had phases. Sometimes it's much worse. Sometimes it's terrible. Sometimes it's great for our democracy. These days is definitely not seen as very good for democracy. And in this absence of transparency, uh, what role should the chief election commissioner play to inspire trust and confidence and to convince people that, uh, yes, at least our election process is healthy, it's honest, and it's definitely something that should inspire you? Yes. You know, the uh, election commission should realize that there are many stakeholders. Election commission is not the only one. And the most important is stakeholders are political parties and of course the voters and the media. So taking all of them along is the, the smart thing to do. It's very important, essential. Now, um, uh, our, our approach, my approach used to be whenever there was some controversy, some dispute like the EVM was, uh, dispute was at the peak in 2009 as when I took over, I immediately called a meeting of all parties. Now, um, uh, and... I shared my concern, they shared their concern, and we arrived uh, at a solution. Somebody suggested, mm, uh, remember Chandra Babu Naidu, uh, because every uh, person who came was following Chandra Babu Naidu. When we asked one chief minister, what is your objection? He said, Chandra Babu Ji bol rahe. Dusre chief minister se bocha, Aapko kya hai ki jo Chandra Babu Ji. So basically he was leading. So we, then we uh, asked Chandra Babu Naidu, ka, ke, mm, uh, we, we pat into to study transparency. Ho Believe me, Seema, in that same meeting, we decided, all right, if this is what all of you want, we want the same thing. We are uh, not uh, uh, hostile and uh, enemies. We are all working for the same cause, free and fair and trustworthy election. So we said, all right, they immediately we took the decision and I ordered the company to start developing the VVPAC. Now, uh, uh, I personally feel uh, subsequently in uh, some of the uh, commission, when they did not take the parties into confidence, they imagine 23 parties going to the Supreme Court. They should have come to the election commission and election commission should have heard them out. So, and convince them, either get convinced them or get convinced. So, because there cannot be a situation when uh, it is impossible. After all, uh, both sides are sensible. So, discussion uh, uh, with the stakeholders all the time, Open mind is extremely important and it educates you. I sometimes I feel I'm a uh, uh, Socrates is a nephew, but then uh, my two colleagues or uh, others will point out the, the other side of the story. It was uh, much more convincing. So the election commission should not and cannot, for the sake of democracy, be seen as an institution of government. It is Correct. actually an institution of democracy, right? Yes. My last, now, definitely the last question, uh, because you raised it on EVMs, and I do know your position, but I'd like you to state it here. Do you actually believe this, uh, which a lot of activists and political parties have been campaigning, that EVMs are rigged, and that is a way of rigging elections? You know, the, if there was a slight doubt, even in my mind, slight, after West Bengal election, now, what better proof do you need of EVM credit? Well, tell, tell me what is it that BJP did not do to win Bengal? Thousands and thousands of crores and uh, dozens of rallies. Uh, uh, the entire cabinet came there for four months. So if they could have manipulated EVM, do you think they would have spared the EVM? So I think Bengal results are the best certificate for the dependability of EVM. Thank you on that note. Thanks you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Seema. And thank you for 
very uh, unusual and unexpected questions about you know media accessibility and other mm. uh, these are not the questions i've faced except once from the bbc and okay yeah. then here and there you know that <laughs> elections are the spine of democracy we know that the voter wants to trust the election commission wants to vote with a feeling that his vote carries down to its logical conclusion and is not tampered with the former chief election commissioner s y kureishi has shed light on many of these issues on how evms according to him are not being tampered with at least not in the manner in which uh, activists and political parties fear that the election process has to remain transparent has to remain impartial has to remain democratic that the election commission should act in a manner where it is not wedded to any ruling party but is wedded to democracy he has also raised and this is an issue which has been raised from time to time that the chief election commissioner should not be appointed directly by the ruling government but that he should be or she should be a unanimous choice of the government and the opposition and that there should be a process and a system which then elects him or nominates her for that post so we are now waiting for the election announcement which the outside limit according to mr kureishi was is january 15 but should have been and would have been better if it was december 25th now let us see when the elections are announced five states are going to the polls all important states particularly uttar pradesh is there punjab uttarakhand goa and of course the northeast uh, manipur so let us wait for the announcement and see democracy play itself out thank you